What's up, my fellow wealth creators? Matty Ice here. I wanted to do a video talking about the risks of universal life insurance. And to do that, I want to go through, unfortunately, yet another complete and absolute disaster with a universal life insurance policy. There is, uh, there's a lawsuit going on right now. Uh, this lady, she was 94 years old and the, her, her universal life policy, which she thought would always be there, would always have level premiums, uh, lapsed because she ha she got a um, <clears throat> she received a notice from the life insurance company that she owed $90,000 and her cash value would not cover it. So she had to make a $24,000 payment or the policy would lapse. Well, she didn't have that and <laughs> the policy lapsed. So all of the premiums that she put in for decades was just gone, not to mention the death benefit that she wanted to pass on to her daughters completely vaporized. So I think a lawsuit is definitely justified here. But um, I, I wanted to do this video because there's some important, really important lessons, I think, that people need to learn from this so that you can avoid the same mistakes. There is still a lot of universal life insurance being sold. It's just uh, different types of universal life insurance, particularly indexed universal life insurance. And people, <laughs> agents think that it's somehow this, this magic unicorn product and that, that's going to solve everybody's problems. These types of things won't happen anymore. And I got news for you. The only difference between index universal life and a traditional universal life policy is the interest crediting strategy. That is it. And the interest crediting strategy on an IUL is based on stock market performance, price of call options, a lot of things that people do not understand. I think that's actually the biggest issue with universal life insurance policies. Can they serve a purpose in, in, in certain situations or maybe they more ideal than other types of life insurance? Maybe, but that is a pretty far stretch, uh, in my opinion. I just, I don't see the, the point of universal life insurance policies. Like it just, it's not worth the risk. There's too many things that can go wrong. And that's what I want to break down in this video. And I want to do that by going through uh, this article that was shared on LinkedIn, uh, just to show you exactly what's happening here. And uh, let, let's talk about the risks so that you know what you're actually getting into. I just, I don't think a lot of people know what they're getting into when they buy these things. Uh, a big part of that is an issue on the agent's end uh, or the advisor selling it. A lot of times I don't even think they understand how these policies work. And, you know, they, they don't explain all of the things that can potentially go wrong here with these with these uh, universal life policies. So, all right. Um, <clears throat> plaintiff contends that the premium suddenly jumped to ninety thousand dollars from twenty five thousand dollars without warning. Uh, yeah, that's um, that's very that's not uncommon with these policies. I think this this is this is happening on a regular basis. Unfortunately, people's lives are being destroyed because of these policies and the reason that it jumped so when um she says it jumped from ninety thousand dollars to twenty five thousand dollars without warning that is how universal life insurance works because it's built on what's called annual renewable term that is a very important thing for you to know if you are considering any type of universal life policy i don't care if it's a regular ul uh iul or vul I, it, it's all built on the same chassis annual renewable term it gets more ex the cost of insurance gets more expensive every single year that you get older that's how term insurance works and what agents will say is that you can manage your net amount at risk that's the next thing you really need to know about any type of universal life policy is that the cost of ins your cost of insurance is applied to whatever your net amount at risk is that is your death benefit minus your cash value and uh, whatever that number is, is what your cost of insurance is applied to. So in this particular case, this this lady was uh, 94 years old. OK, uh, let me read this. Carolyn Hawkins believed the universal life policy would have stable premiums. And it does until you're, it, it eats away at your cash value. And now you don't have any cash value left to support the cost of insurance. Now you get a bill or a notice in the mail from the life insurance company saying, hey, you need to pay X, Y, Z amounts in order to keep this policy in force. <laughs> so it's stable until it's not anymore, until your cash value is vaporized. All right, uh, but instead the premiums uh, increased to $90,000 in 2022. Can you imagine that? You're in your golden years, retirement, and you're enjoying life. You think everything is good, and then all of a sudden you get a notice saying that your cost of insurance, your premium that year is $90,000. 
and uh, it was from $25,000 in 2011. That's a huge jump. In 11 years, 25000 to 90000 that is the impact of annual renewable term. Because every single year you get older, and, and when you're older in your 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, that cost grows exponentially. Like it, it creeps up a little bit every single year when you're younger. Not a huge deal. It's definitely manageable. Okay. But when you get older, holy smokes, does cost of insurance get extremely, extremely expensive. Okay, so that's why uh, the, the, the huge jump there. Hawkins had no choice but to let the policy lapse, according to a complaint that Hawkins and her trust filed earlier this month in a state court, et cetera. Okay, and that's what happens. A lot of times, like can, when you're in retirement, a lot of people are on a fixed income. You know, 401ks are not doing what they promised to do. Okay, <laughs> providing this massive, huge nest egg for people. It's just, it's not happening uh, a lot of the times. All right, so a lot of times uh, people are on limited income. Can you, would you be able to afford a random $25,000 bill? 24,000, I think is what it was. Uh, like the cost of insurance went to 90,000, but as we'll see here in a moment, um, there was a specific dollar amount she needed to pay uh, above what her cash value was covering. But like, do we really want to risk getting a bill for 10,000, 20,000, $90,000, whatever it is when we're in retirement? No, <laughs> that just doesn't make any sense. Why are we rolling the dice with our financial future, like doing things like this for a couple of extra potential percentage points of growth over a whole life policy? I'm, I, as you guys know, I'm a huge advocate of dividend paying whole life insurance policies. When they're structured properly, they can be absolutely amazing savings vehicles. And you know what? This doesn't happen with whole life insurance because the costs are level. They're spread out through the entire policy. They're guaranteed to not increase. Okay. You don't get this problem with whole life insurance. If she had a dividend paying whole life insurance policy, this would not happen. It would not be blown up in her face like this. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's continue. Uh, Hawk has bought the policy originally written by XYZ uh, firm here. Uh, let's see. Yep. This is just talking about the suit. Advisors could not. Yep. Of course, they don't uh, uh, leave a comment or provide a comment, whatever. All right. Uh, Hawkins' attorney said the problems with the policy had taken a toll on his client. I mean, how would they not? She had planned on providing for her daughters. This is just heartbreaking to me. You know, she pays into it for however many decades, and she's she's she thinks she truly believes that this policy is going to provide for her daughters, and then all of a sudden, psh, poof, it's gone. Carolyn did not believe it when she received the notice in the mail that the policy would lapse and be worthless. And this happens to like, oftentimes it's too late. Like people don't realize there's a problem until you get that notice and it's too late to do anything about it. That's, that's really frustrating. It's because the companies don't send in force illustrations every single year. Um, if you do have a policy, a universal life policy, you need to make sure you are doing an in force illustration and review with an agent every single year to make sure that your policy is doing what you were told it's going to it, it was going to do because if not you need to make adjustments you need to you need to know that there's a problem so that you can potentially do something about it okay worked as a teacher for 20 years ran a national beauty pageant uh, she bought this life insurance policy in 2009 this was what really really irked me really got under my skin in 2009 uh, she met with her advisor told uh, her, the advisor recommended that she buy a universal life policy to keep premiums stable. She bought a $2 million policy with a $46,000 per year annual premium. So this thing blew up in 2022. She bought it in 2009. That's what uh, we're, we're, yeah, that's 13 years. Okay. She's, she's 94 years old. That means he sold that policy to her when she was 81 years old. I think I'm getting the math right there. I, I, like, I, I just, that, that's criminal to me. That's elder abuse. Why on earth would you sell a universal life insurance policy to an 83-year-old person, an 81-year-old person, a 70-year-old person? Like, these things are so dangerous when you get older. They're not a problem when you get when you set them up younger and you've built up uh, a lot of cash value, but even still, they can absolutely run into problems. It's just not as big of a risk. But you sold that policy to an 80-year-old woman. I'm sorry, that's criminal. That's unbelievable. 
Um, let's see, 2011, uh, Hawkins lowered the death, the policy death benefit to 1 million. So it went from 2 million to 1 million and the annual premiums to 25,000. Hmm. I wonder why they did that. That's, uh, that's one of the so-called benefits of universal life insurance is the flexibility and how you can manage net amount at risk by lowering the death benefit. Well, there's a lot of problems with that. If you have to do that, that means your policy is probably blowing up. It's not doing what you anticipated. You have to lower the net amount at risk because the cost of insurance is so high. Not to mention, uh, you know, if you set this up for, if you tried to set it up for cash value, if you lower the death benefit too much, you could end up mecking the policy and lose all the tax advantages. And uh, I don't, I don't know if she was using this for income. It doesn't sound like it, but yeah, a lot of problems. All right, annual premium increased to uh, in 2023, 2022, it increased to ninety thousand dollars, and that she would have to contribute twenty four thousand dollars for the current year to keep the policy from lapsing. You know what that means? The cost of insurance ate up all of her cash value there wasn't any there was no cash value left and there was still a cost of insurance that had to be covered that's why she got a bill for twenty four thousand dollars because her cash value could not cover the cost of insurance absolutely ridiculous so anyways and then it just goes on to you know the talks a little bit more about the case and you know it's just this is just disgusting to me I, you know, because these are real people, real lives that are being destroyed by these policies. For what? Like, like, why on earth would you sell a universal life insurance policy to an 80 year old person? That's just absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, I know I'm going to get in the comments from IUL agents and advocates like, you know, you know, there's levers you can pull. There's, you know, that's why you have an overloan protection rider and a no lapse guarantee, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, there, there's there's always fine print. Uh, behind those things, number one. Number two, if you have to use those things, that means your policy still failed. Okay, maybe you keep it from lapsing, but your policy still failed. So do we like? Do we really want to roll the dice with our financial future with pro uh, on products like these guys? I it just, it's not worth it to me. Maybe it is to you. Maybe it makes sense. Just my, my only ask is please, please, please do your research. Understand how these things actually work. Know what you are putting your money into because this is a very real problem. This is a very real situation and scenario that people are experiencing on a regular basis with these policies. Okay, so just be careful out there, guys. I don't want you getting hurt. Uh, if you have any questions, please drop them down in the comments. I'll have uh, some links in the description to additional training, uh, you know, my calendar as well. If you want to have a conversation about your policy, if you want to do a review and audit, uh, or maybe talk about uh, a whole life policy. Uh, I have two of them, and they're amazing. So anyways, I hope you guys are crushing it to your success. Matty Ice is out.